Here's a fun question to think about in the name of science. Why do people have sex the way that we do? You know, with the whipped cream and the inflatable penguins and the laser pointers. Everybody's having sex like that, right? Props aside, it does seem like most humans prefer to have sex with one another in private, away from other humans. Sure, you have your occasional exhibitionist, but it seems as though uh, those people are actually getting off on the taboo of other people seeing them have sex. So anthropologist uh, Yitzhak Ben Mocha from uh, Zurich University decided to try to figure out why people prefer to have sex in private. And in his conclusion, the reason why we fuck in private is because men don't want their bros to see them and then get all horny and then maybe try to uh, get it on with their ladies. This also prevents said bros from getting jealous, which would mean that the next time they're all at the bar, they might not wingman for you because you fucked that chick in front of them. So uncool, Kyle. While this would be a fascinating scientific result, unfortunately, Ben Mocha did not do any of the actual research that might tell us that that's true. Uh, because this is just another example of evolutionary psychology, the scientific version of whose line is it anyway, because everything's made up and the points don't matter. In this study published this month in Proceedings of the Royal Society, Ben Mocha looked through thousands of cultural studies to establish that, yes, uh, privacy during sex is nearly universal amongst humans, even those humans for whom privacy is difficult to find. Uh, in fact, in places where, for instance, parents are forced to share bedrooms with their children, they encourage children to hide or they have sex outside. At least according to early 20th century anthropologist Bronislaw Molinowski uh, in his unfortunately named book, Sex and Repression in Savage Society. Is all this true? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, ben Mocha's data points are based on surveys and he admits that people are often reticent to share their real opinions on taboo subjects, like whether or not they like to fuck in front of an audience. We can definitely say that the human behavior of hiding sexual activity from others is widespread, and if not universal across the planet, it's pretty close. Uh, it's hard to say that anything is ever universal among any population of animals because all of us, though, are always changing and adapting to our environments. But yeah, we can say that this is pretty widespread. We definitely can't say that it's universal across time. Behaviorally and cognitively, modern humans have been around for about 50,000 years. And unfortunately, we don't have many extant sex tapes from the earliest part of that period. In fact, I don't think we have any, but feel free to correct me in the comments. Just kidding, I don't read the comments. But let's say, sure, it's universal today for humans to prefer to bone in private. Does that mean, though, that there is a genetic component to it? No. Uh, there are lots of behaviors uh, that are universal amongst humans, like making music, for instance. Is there a gene that we evolved specifically to make music? We don't know. But uh, obviously people are furiously trying to find out because for the past few decades, it's been hot shit to try to find the genetic component for pretty much everything. And any behavior that is considered universal is like a T-bone steak to evolutionary psychologists. Some of that research is good, but a lot of it misses out on the important way that our genes interact with our environment in a complex, never-ending cycle. And sure enough, like most EvoPsych, this paper does nothing to establish any kind of evidence for a genetic component behind our choice of where we make the beast with two backs. The best he can do is to compare this human behavior with one other animal species that we know likes to do it in private, the uh, Arabian babbler, which is a bird that Ben Mocha has also studied expressly for this purpose. Let's talk about that study that he did initially because it's critical to his conclusion in this study. Ben Mocha observed 56 occasions in which Arabian babblers attempted to fuck each other. And in each of those instances, they found that the mating pair moved away from the group to do it in private. 
They came up with a few potential hypotheses for why they might do that, and they crossed off each one as necessary. Like, number one, are they avoiding predators? Uh, only just over half of the attempts to bang occurred in easily accessible shelters that would protect them from predators. Uh, number two, are the males fucking in private as a signal of dominance, i.e. she's mine and you can't have her? They found that the males hid their requests to the females that they wanted to fuck. If they wanted to dominate their subs, not like that, uh, they would want them to know that they're fucking, right? Sure. Uh, so let's cross that one off too. Hypothesis three is do the birds get angry when they see other birds fucking? And that's why it's hidden. And the answer to that is yes, but only once. Literally in one instance, they observed a higher hierarchy male bird uh, who caught a lower hierarchy male bird trying to get his little bird dick wet. And the alpha chased away the beta. Um, in every other instance, whenever a bird was caught trying to have sex, the mating pair just split up and ran off, flew off. So Ben Mocha decided that this means the subordinates are hiding sex so they don't get beat up by the alphas. But then why do the alphas hide their sex? Their observations didn't provide any positive evidence to suggest it. They were only able to cross off their other hypotheses. So they did what researchers have been doing for thousands of years. They made one up <laughs> that they didn't test and said, well, if it's none of those other things, I guess maybe it's that. The made up hypothesis is that Arabian babblers are cooperative breeders, which means that they all pitch in to take care of the flock as a whole, even if they're not breeding. So the dominant males hide the sex so that the subordinates don't get jealous and then refuse to take care of the offspring, scare away predators, and do those other community upkeep things. It's compelling, but the problem is that they literally have no evidence for this at all. And the bigger problem is that Ben Mocha then charged ahead with his ultimate goal, which was to compare Arabian babblers to humans in this new paper, pointing out that since Arabian babblers and humans both have sex in private, maybe they do it for the same reason. And the reason he previously established in that first paper with zero evidence to support it was that alphas want to keep the cooperation of betas. Even if he had evidence for that hypothesis in Arabian babblers, which again, he does not, you can't just point to two insanely distantly related animals and say that the trait that they share must have evolved for the same reason. Like, you can't even say that about physical traits that we can easily observe, let alone behavioral traits that you have no evidence are even based in genetics. About 600 million years have passed since the common ancestor between humans and birds. Bats are closer to birds than humans, but even the common ancestor of bats and birds didn't have wings. Wings are an example of convergent evolution, uh, meaning a trait that they both share, but that they evolved for different reasons at different times after those species split. If we can't even shrug and say, well, bats and birds both have wings, so they must have it for the same reason, where on earth does this guy get off saying that humans and Arabian babblers both fuck in private for the same reason? It's completely unscientific, and I honestly cannot believe that a journal published it. Amusingly, when Ben Mocha's first study on Arabian babblers came out, it got a glowing overview in National Geographic. But even that article featured a colleague at Cornell pointing out that acorn woodpeckers also conceal sex, but his hypothesis is that they do so so that the females can hide the paternity of the egg. Weird, a hypothesis that's driven by what the female wants. How did that make its print? Ben Mocha says that that's not likely though because females will mate with subordinate males only after the egg laying is done. So the betas shouldn't be under any illusion about being the fathers. That of course assumes that once one egg is laid, no more eggs are ever going to be laid. And it also suggests that if the betas are that smart, then Ben Mocha's hypothesis wouldn't really mean that much anyway. 
why would the beta males get jealous that the alpha gets to have sex when they know that they're going to get sex too once the egg laying is done? Anyway, it's all absurd. Uh, despite the fact that this study was published in a reputable journal, there's zero evidence that you inherited a preference for fucking in private from your parents. There's zero evidence that you fuck in private because you want your male friends to continue to be your bro. Uh, and there's zero evidence that it's even happening in bird populations for that reason. Um, you may as well say that humans evolved a gene that allowed us to hold in a fart when we're around someone attractive. Not everything is an adaptive trait.